Got to point out the biggest flaw in this rack in the world. Remember, in the beginning I told you guys that there's a catch pan, okay? And that catch pan prevents the water from falling onto all the electrical components of the compressors. You see how it's coming out of this side. All right, I'm gonna try to give you guys a shot here. All that lint that I washed out is in that catch pan. So when that water evaporates and it dries up, all that lint goes right back up onto the condenser. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have been called on a walk-in freezer that's not working properly and the fans are running, but it's just not cold enough in here. Um, the coil's kind of iced up in a funky way too. I'll be honest with you, that looks like a refrigeration problem to me. And it says 33 degrees on the thermostat. So, and it's set for negative 10, so. Thermostat is set correctly. Um, we're gonna have to jump up onto the roof. Uh, I guarantee we're gonna have to put some service gauges on this guy and see what's going on. Walking up to the rack, I can hear a funny noise coming from a compressor and to me it sounds like a compressor is bypassing on an internal pressure relief. Yeah. One of them is. Yep. It's like an internal pressure relief, safety relief or something is bypassed in this guy. Um, this is my walk-in freezer compressor. I've got like a lukewarm suction line, hot discharge, something's going on and I can hear it internally bypassing. So we need to figure out, reset it. Now usually that's caused by a dirty condenser. Um, we have an evaporative cooler here to cool off this rack. Something's going on here, though, but that panel should be there. Yep. Nice plugged up rack. This thing's probably been going. See, the problem is, is they told me this thing's been going off since Friday and they didn't want to play overtime. So hopefully the compressor's not ruined. We've got to cool off the compressor, reset the, the bypass. If it happens too many times, it'll, uh, it'll ruin the pressure relief in the compressor. And this swamp cooler just turned on on me, so it's a temperature control. Okay, let me put some gauges on and I'll show you guys what it's doing. All right, um, like I said, warm suction line, really hot discharge line. The discharge gas is bypassing into the suction line via the pressure relief in there. Um, the condenser being plugged, that head pressure should be through the roof, and that's the problem. It gets to, depending on how weak the pressure relief is, it usually gets to about 410, 415, something like that when it's weaker. Sometimes it'll go a little bit higher and then it'll bypass. It's trying to save the compressor, but if it keeps happening over and over again, eventually the pressure relief will go bad. That's just my experience. So let's hope that I can, uh, to reset it, you're just gonna shut it down, let the pressures equalize out, the pressure relief should reset, and we're gonna clean that condenser and cool the uh, compressor off. Well, we'll just go ahead and clean the condenser and the compressor will get cooled off. And then we'll see if we can't get the pressure relief to reset. Gotta be very cautious and you need to understand how your restaurants work. This particular refrigeration rack runs the ice machine condensers too. The ice machine condensers though also have indigo heads downstairs. And on those indigo heads, they will go off on a safety if you shut off the ice machines when the heads are not shut off. So. Solution is either we don't shut off the ice machine heads or we go downstairs and power down the, the head units downstairs and uh, then come up here and shut everything down. And in this situation, it's super easy. So I'm gonna go downstairs, shut off them downstairs and uh, then come back up here, shut down the rack and I'll bring hoses up with me and we'll get this guy clean. Shut off the ice machine heads and power down the entire rack, even at the main, close it up. And then we're gonna take every panel off and we're gonna wash this condenser from the inside out. Racks opened all the way through, but I put the panels in on that side and leave them out on this side. And the reason why is the water will overflow. If you watch or if you ever do one of these, the water will overflow and get all over the electrical components of the compressor worse. Now it's still gonna drip down, but there's a giant catch pan underneath here that keeps it from falling on the compressors, so. All right, we're gonna give this guy a pre-rinse and then we're going to uh, put some cleaner on it, let it sit, and then rinse it off. I like the Venom Pack because this is enough cleaner to do this whole rack and then some, right? Because 
if you mix it at the lowest dilution ratio you can get eight gallons from this but i'm going to mix it higher because this thing's pretty dirty but it's really cool because you can just throw it in the bucket and you don't have to bring you know three four gallons of cleaner up onto the roof we're starting with a pre-rinse to give the cleaner a smooth surface to flow down that way it can really penetrate thoroughly and not get hung up on the dry surfaces that's just my opinion but that's how i roll nice and wet and then we're going to apply the cleaner let it sit for a second now we are going to use the brightener cleaner which is dangerous if you leave it on too long it will etch the coil you just got to be careful okay don't leave it on too long but it is high foaming i come to this side and i'm going to knock down the big stuff like the wand is really nice because you can get way back in there and really knock down the big stuff before we apply the cleaner so that way the cleaner can do a better job of getting in the inside all right i'm spraying it on super concentrated getting a lot of foaming action going on we're gonna let this just sit there and penetrate through the coils and then we're gonna give it a good rinse. All right, rinse the condenser. It's looking pretty good. Still a little bit left to go, but I gotta point out the biggest flaw in this rack in the world. Remember, in the beginning, I told you guys that there's a catch pan, okay? And that catch pan prevents the water from falling onto all the electrical components of the compressors. You see how it's coming out of this side. All right, I'm gonna try to give you guys a shot here. All that lint that I washed out is in that catch pan. So when that water evaporates and it dries up, all that lint goes right back up onto the condenser. See that drain hole? It's plugged up. The catch pan's full of water right now because the lint is plugging it up. You gotta make sure you look at the big picture, guys. Clean that lint out of there. Clean that catch pan. Then the condenser won't get as dirty as fast. All that lint and gunk and whatever's coming out you can see new stuff washing up every second and i just have the hose just sitting there it's going to be almost impossible to get it all out but i'm going to do my best the system is back on and running we've had many problems i've mentioned it in videos before my suspicion is and i've never done the math just because whatever but the condenser is undersized or it's marginally sized so we've actually had to add this evaporative cooler so i need to make sure that is working too that should be blowing on the rack helping to pre-cool it for these really hot days. This past weekend here in Southern California, we hit about 110, 115 in my area. So it's pretty hot. So everything's running, the compressor's reset. Check our compression. It's got a wet condenser, so we're gonna let it run for a minute. It's not bypassing at the moment. So we're just gonna let it run and we'll see what happens. Let's hope that it doesn't bypass again. So the water flow, was turned off basically it was it was stuck probably winterized this probably has never been started up so we have no water helping with the pre-cooling which would explain a lot so now that i'm filling it up with water you can see it's already flowing water through it we're lucky it didn't burn out the pump okay it's going to take a very long time that it's running now uh the dtc valve is working this is the cooling valve basically it takes liquid refrigerant meters it into the compressor when it goes into high compression ratio situations to help cool off the head um, we've got a clear sight glass. It's probably hard for you guys to see, but it's clear. Um, it's definitely going to take a while to come down to temperature because that box tip was at 35 and it's been there all weekend. So we're just going to let it run for a bit. All right, been about 25, 30 minutes running. Box is coming down in temp. Sight glass is still clear. Refrigerant pressures are a lot better considering we're running with a clean condenser now. And the evaporative cooler's running. I think we're going to tell the customer to keep an eye on this one and let us know if they have any other problems. There's always a possibility there could be internal pressure relief damage in that compressor, but let's hope that it's okay. When I got here this morning, this thermometer right here read 30 degrees. Um, these aren't very accurate, don't ever go by just these, but now it's reading zero. And my thermometer in the box is reading 16 degrees, so give it some time, but it's working now. It's coming down in temperature. That weird frost pattern is gone. It's just frosting evenly now. So we'll tell them to keep an eye on it. With these customers, sometimes, you know, they frustrate you. And in this situation, I was kind of happy. I had heard this, I actually heard this call come in on Saturday evening. And they said, hey, we don't want you to come out till Monday. But then the story even got better when I got there on Monday morning. And they said, oh, yeah, well, it actually happened Friday. And the boss of the boss of the boss decided that they didn't want to pay overtime on it, which, okay, that's fine. But I told the customer, I go, look, I said, not that I really wanted to come out here on the weekend. I said, but you guys almost ruined a potentially four, somewhere between four to $6,000 compressor. 
by the time you got done doing it all. It's a big job to do that compressor. And I go all because you guys didn't want to pay a couple hundred dollars in overtime. So, you know, they were lucky. And I told them, I said, you know, there's no telling if there's any compressor damage, but I said, time's going to have to tell. It's working fine right now. But in my experience, actually on this compressor itself, I've changed this compressor on this rack three times already since startup in like 2004-ish, I think is when this restaurant was opened. I've changed this compressor that many times, okay? And each time has been... Um, internal pressure relief problems where the pressure relief uh, has failed and it continues to fail. And what's happening is, in my opinion, the rack condenser is marginally sized and it causes uh, the system to run higher than normal head pressures on a normal basis. Um, and it just causes issues. Uh, recently, this, this last time I changed the compressor, I finally got to the bottom of it a little bit more than normal. And I just told them, I said, look, we need to pull this compressor out of this rack, put a bigger condensing unit. It'll be properly sized. We gave them a price. The customer didn't want to go that route. They asked for a couple other di different options. So we quoted them a new compressor in the existing rack. And then we added an evaporative cooler to pre-cool the rack to try to bring the condensing temp down. That's why you guys see that cooler there. That cooler is there solely for that walk-in freezer compressor because we've had so many problems with it. Um, now, if you guys want to go back in the video and look, look at when I had all the panels off of the rack. If you look at the three condensers on the far right side of that rack, okay, the three condensers, you had uh, the beer walk-in, the walk-in cooler, and the walk-in freezer. And all three of them have an identically sized condenser coil. If you look at them, they're all the same size. But then look at the sizes of the compressors, okay? So the manufacturer of this rack more than likely sized the condensers based off of basically what was convenient to fit in there. Now, they probably, I'm sure, paid attention to, um, you know, heat of rejection and all that stuff, right? They probably paid attention to that, but I'm just saying that the walk-in freezer is marginally sized. So therefore, if you get even a slightly dirty condenser, or in this situation, a rather dirty condenser, it immediately goes off on internal bypass. Whereas the other ones weren't going off on bypass because the condensers were grossly oversized, in my opinion. The beer walk-in in this restaurant is tiny. The walk-in cooler is a rather large walk-in cooler, but the walk-in freezer being low temp requires a bigger condensing unit, as usual, okay? So you can just tell that there wasn't a lot of logic. They didn't size every condenser based off of the BTUs per se because the beer walk-in and the walk-in cooler are the exact same size as the freezer. You guys kind of get where I'm going with my logic there? They just probably have like a one-size-fits-all. They only have so many condensers they're willing to use in here, and that's what happens. So it's just interesting, you know, and I, I wasn't trying to be, I wasn't upset with the customer. I was just trying to tell them like, look guys, if you guys have a problem, that's what I'm here for. Call me in. And you know, and they were like, yeah, but we were told no overtime. And I'm like, but it's your walk-in freezer. Like, again, I really didn't want to go out there anyways, but still, you know, it, it just kind of baffles my mind right now, but everything's changing right now, guys in the restaurant industry with the virus and all that stuff. Everybody is pinching pennies in different ways and doing things that just make me scratch my head. Some restaurants are spending money hand over fist right now, changing equipment, doing all kinds of things. And it's like, where's that coming from? You know, I'm thankful for restaurants that are spending money right now, but it also makes me worried because I want to keep doing business for them for the next 20 years until I retire 30 years, whatever it is. Right. But, you know, some of these restaurants, I wonder if they're going to be around two years from now, three years from now. I don't know. It's very interesting. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. You know, I try to do my best. So, hey, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Uh, do me a favor. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, there's a couple different methods of support you guys could give. OK, the biggest thing, just simply watch the commercials. I know it's difficult. I try to only put in one commercial in my major videos. Um, and then on the live streams, I try to put two or three commercials throughout there. YouTube, though, pay, bear with me. YouTube has been playing with the commercials and I've been catching them a lot lately where I haven't been looking at the live streams. And then I find out there's like 20 commercials. No joke in there. I've been kicking back and going back and re-editing those. I try to keep it down to a couple commercials in the live streams. But if you guys watch the commercials, it's a way that you guys, I know it takes a few minutes of your time, but then you let YouTube pay me. You know, that's kind of cool. Um, the other way you guys can support me is by going to my website, hvacrvideos.com. And you guys can buy merch if you're interested. Okay, I've got tons of merch uh, back here. 
and I've got tons of new shirts and hats. Um, I'm out of stock on a lot of the big boy shirts and the hats, but I've got all new ones coming in, so they're going to be here shortly. Um, you guys can also, if you're considering purchasing any tools, um, go check out truetechtools.com and use my offer code BIG picture one word and you'll save eight percent on your order and i get a small commission that way so that's another way to help support the channel okay um you guys are awesome i really really appreciate it down in the show notes of this video is going to be a link to a discord server that i've started with a, a couple friends of mine and we've done it in the past but this time we're trying to do it a little bit different so we've got a discord server going you guys can see the link in that and uh yeah live streams monday evening 5 p.m pacific work permitting so long as i can get off work that's it. I really, really appreciate it. And we will catch you guys on the next one.